Hey guys, it's now time for part 3 and completion of our Invisible Man build. Alright, welcome back, and it's time to start work on the figure. So obviously the main challenge here is not going to be construction, it's going to be painting. And let me just kind of go over, uh, take a second to go over my uh, plans for the paint scheme here. First we're going to start off with a black primer, because I want to start off with a nice dark base. For the colors, I'm using the box art as my guide. Pants are going to be kind of a tan color. I chose this green ochre uh, for the pants. It's not really very green, it is more of a tan color. And then for the inside jacket, I'm going to go with this gray-blue color. We're going to paint the tie red, the shirt white. And then for the overcoat, we're going to go with brown tones rather than gray. I'm going to start off here with a base color of khaki brown. And for the entire model, we're going to apply some shadows and some highlights. For the shoes, they're either going to be black or dark brown. I haven't quite decided on that yet. So I'm going to jump ahead here now to apply the shadows on the pants. As you can see, I've already painted them to green ochre. And my goal is to replicate some of the uh, bills that I've seen online. And this one in particular is one of my favorites. Um, I'm not sure who the model builder was, but you can find him pretty easily online. Um, at least these pictures you can anyway. But you see how he does the shading here. And uh, that is my goal, is to replicate something like that. So I'm starting out with uh, just taking our base color and darkening it with a darker brown like this. And I've uh, put it into this little uh, tray here. And so what I'm doing is essentially dry brushing. And uh, I did coat this uh, half here with uh, a gloss coat to begin with. And that's nice because it uh, allows us to go back if we made a mistake by simply just taking a Q-tip, uh, dipping it in water, and you can wipe off what you've just painted on. Once you're satisfied with the look, then of course we'll go ahead and secure it with a uh, dull coat. So once the shadows are applied, and all I did was I just brushed in very lightly, you can see in this lighting here, uh, these darker areas, but what really helps to highlight them are putting in the highlights. So all I did was I mixed some white now into the base color, and I'm just gently dry brushing uh, into the areas that are popping up towards us. So, I'm not sure how much you can appreciate in this lighting, but uh, this is the effect that I was after. Uh, not quite as good as what I see in the picture, but this is my first time ever trying this, and I think it's coming out fairly decent. Alright, so I'm going to let this dry, and let's move on to the jacket. Okay, so uh, this is how it's looking, and you can see in the same fashion as I did with the pants, I applied some dark shading here, here, and here, wherever the shadows are, just keeping our light source in mind, and some highlights along here, here, and along the edge of the jacket here. Uh, I did work on the tie as well, but I am not going to do anything with the collar because I'd like to work on the coat and uh, do the type of shading I'm going to do with that and just make sure that um, I do the same with the collar so everything matches. So let's go ahead and move forward with the overcoat. So these are the parts to the overcoat now, and based on the way this is designed, it seems the best thing to do now is to go ahead and assemble everything together. I'm going to prime the coat first, and then uh, glue everything together, mask off the main body, and continue to paint and detail the coat. Alright, so as you can see I have the coat now attached to the body. Uh, I started to work on the seams here, but I, I stopped short here because uh, we shouldn't eliminate it completely since most coats have a side seam. So what I'm going to do is use some plastic putty just to fill that in a little bit uh, because there are a few gaps here and there. Uh, but I am still going to leave that seam present as well as the one on the shoulders because again most coats have that as well. The sleeves are ready to go. Uh, the seams have been addressed here on the side, so those are all set. And the plan is now to apply different shades of brown. And I'm going to actually try brushing this on versus using an airbrush because I want to get a little bit of texture onto the surface. So let me quickly summarize what ended up happening here. I first applied the base color, did some pre-shading, then resprayed the base color over those areas before hand brushing on the shadows. Well, I wasn't satisfied with the way those were looking, so I painted over them. But this time when I applied the shadows, I added a glaze medium to the paint in hopes of slowing the drying process down so we'd see less brush strokes. 
Well, I still wasn't satisfied. So I reapplied the base color around those areas again, but this time when I applied the shadows, I used my Renegade airbrush because it has a regulator on it, and uh, the shadows, I felt, came out much better. But I did still hand paint on the highlights. So basically, what I wanted to demonstrate to you here is that sometimes it takes a few times to get it right. So next came the shoes, to which I dry brush Vallejo's red leather at the toes, along with a little light gray to the heels. I then applied some Tamiya panel line accent color to the laces, and this is what they look like afterwards. The head was next. After covering the seams, it was painted with a mix of Tester's white and a little light gray. I then applied an acrylic wash, then finished off more detailing with MIG Ammo's Starship wash. And this is how it looked like when it was completed. Assembly of the base was next. I applied a little weathering using this metal slag pigment by MIG Ammo along the baseboard and the floor. And I should also note that I reinforced the attachment of the wall with this block of wood here. The attachment initially relied on just three screws which hooked the wall to the floor. This extra block was screwed to the base and glued to the back wall, making for a sturdier construction. I continued to add more detail by creating this chemical spill. This was done by first taking some sprue cutters and cutting away at the beaker, which created this broken, shattered look, and then added this blue realistic water by Cinerama, which dried and created the blue spill that you see. After this, the books and other accessories were added. So what's left now is to complete the construction of the Invisible Man, and while I'm doing that, let's go ahead and check out what Mark is doing. After that, we'll both reveal our completed projects. Hey everyone, we are back. And I start off my figures by applying primer. In this case, I use Stino Res, and I chose uh, black for the uh, primer base coat. Some dry brushing was done to the head using the uh, Vallejo colors. I used a uh, dark gray initially, and then I followed up with a lighter gray. I applied Vallejo color white to the shirt to uh, just block in the base color. And here's another shot of the head with the uh, lighter gray applied. So new lenses were made for the goggles using uh, micro crystal clear and I tinted that with some Tamiya clear blue paint. Then I continued to block in the basic colors like dark blue for the tie. Humbral mask oil is used to mask off the shirt and tie so that I can airbrush the other colors. And this is what it looks like. This is just the base colors blocked in with no highlighting, no shadows done.
So the next step is to paint our shadows and highlights using basic figure painting techniques. So why do we bother to take this time and effort? Well, if you look at a model figure painted in solid colors under normal light, the light is not intense enough to pick out the tiny shadows and much of the detail can get lost. So how do we determine where those painted shadows and highlights are going to go on our figure? Well, we have to imagine a light source that is above our figure. This light source is generally at the 12 o'clock position, as if the sun were directly overhead on our figure. The light will strike the top surfaces of the figure at an angle of about 60 degrees. Surfaces revealed to the light source will be brighter. Surfaces hidden from it will be in the dark shadow. Okay guys, well it's now time for the final reveal. And uh, this of course is the part of the video where we get to make some uh, closing comments about the completed project. Now before we move on to this, I just want to make a quick note that I had every intention on ending this video series uh, much the same way as I started with a recorded Skype call and to have Mark in on this. Uh, but unfortunately we had some technical problems with that yesterday. I couldn't quite get it together. Uh, but Mark has sent us now some edited video which he's going to talk about his completed project and then I will show you mine. Uh, before we start though, I'd like to go ahead and show you the completed project side by side. All right, and here we go. And as you can see, Mark did an exceptional job with his build. I'm very pleased, really, with the way both of them turned out. Uh, again, the whole point of this project was to give you guys the opportunity to see how two builders would approach the same model. And it was really fun to see how each of us took a different route uh, to get to this point. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to Mark's final review. So here it is. This is the final reveal of my Mobius Invisible Man project. So I started this project with some uh, basic goals. First I wanted to scratch build the floor and some of the furniture. And we did that using uh, basswood. I didn't plan on doing any major modifications to the figure and I really didn't other than the goggles where I used the, uh, the micro crystal clear to modify the lenses. Um, I also planned on using decals to decorate my books and I did that using the TSDS aftermarket decals. And I wanted to add a back wall and a window to my diorama and I did that as well. So I think Mobius did a really good job with this model kit. It was a lot of fun to put together. The figure is detailed extremely well. Um, there's a lot of potential to modify the kit to your own taste, to upgrade the base as I did. Um, you can add additional props. Just, just lots of things you can do with it and it's a lot of fun. Um, I think the only, uh, I guess you could call it a negative thing about it, is trying to align that left hand with the left arm. Um, that takes a little bit of perseverance and a little bit of sweat, but you can do it. Um, in the end, it, it's a really nice looking diorama. It's a really, really impressive display. And I would recommend this kit to anyone who's a fan of the original Invisible Man. Great work, Mark. That really turned out fantastic. And by the way, if you guys didn't recognize the actor that's um, hanging on the wall there at the back of his display, that's Claude Rains. He's the actor who originally played the Invisible Man in the 1933 film. Well, it's time to go ahead and move on to my build. So, I agree with Mark. I think Mobius did a fantastic job with the sculpt and uh, design of the figure. And the company accessories, they were also a nice touch. So, if you recall, my goals were to scratch build a floor, create a back wall, 
use Photoshop to make labels for the accessories, and use the box art as my guide for painting the figure. So overall, I have to say I'm very happy how all these objectives turned out. I did step out of my comfort zone by using wood instead of plastic for the display. Um, using popsicle sticks for the flooring is something I came across early on when searching for the net for how to build a floor for a dollhouse. It was fairly easy to do, and they really took up the stain to make up a nice, uh, quite convincing scaled-down replica of a wooden floor. The wood used for the back wall and for the attachment of the popsicle sticks um, is easily obtained in the model section at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Not very expensive. Uh, luckily, it didn't turn out uh, to more than just making a straight cut here, and I avoided any complications by not cutting a hole for a window, although, looking back, I maybe should have tried. Photoshop is something I've learned from being a photographer, and I've known how to use it now for years, and it was a handy tool here to create, uh, for helping to create the bottle labels, desk notes, and of course the Morlock painting. Uh, I thought it'd be a fun thing to do is to add a nod to the, another H.G. Wells classic, The Time Machine, and of course this is from the Time Machine movie from the 1960s. So the great thing about this model is as you step back and view the finished model, you realize there's just a lot for the viewer to look at. Uh, and it was fun adding the other details like the little chemical spill on the floor or the desk notes with actual calculations uh, and human anatomy diagrams. Uh, even taking the time to fill the bottles and flasks adds that much more for the observer to take in. As I built this kit, I just came up with one idea after another and at some point it's that you just have to stop yourself from doing too much. Lastly, painting figures is a really new thing for me. I just haven't done it a whole lot, and I was a bit nervous about painting the figure here. Uh, I see a number of expert uh, figure builders who simply do this all by hand. Uh, I tried, but couldn't quite get the results I wanted, so I relied heavily on my airbrush. And the one tool that was extremely helpful here was the Renegade airbrush, which, as you saw, allows you a finer control with paint application. Okay, well there you have it. That's a wrap for this project. I hope you enjoyed this. Mark and I really enjoyed putting it all together for you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us here on my YouTube channel or at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com. Uh, we plan on doing another buddy build in 2019, just haven't really fully decided on the model yet, so just watch for that. Uh, in the meantime, take care and thanks again for watching. <music>